What's up guys, I'm LQ, this is the LQ Review, and I'm here to do a ranking video today. This ranking video is going to be on the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. So this is Freddy Krueger. I've already done a Jason one. I did a Jason one a number of months ago, actually. I uh, did my Friday 13th video. It was one of my first videos I, I ever done. But uh, to be honest with you, Freddy Krueger means more to me than Jason does. Freddy Krueger is like that foundational horror icon. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, was one of the first, it was the first horror movie I ever watched as a kid. And it's one of those movies that, you know, it would be in that, that top 25 of movies. Not, not my top 25 favorite movies ever, but if I were to create a top 25 list of the movies that shaped who I am as a movie fan, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 would be on there. I bought Nightmare on Elm Street 3 on VHS when I was a kid, with, with money that I saved up on my own, and I had no idea what it was. I had no idea what it was. I just liked the box. The box had the had Freddy's head in the background, and then you had the blades that were going out, and then you had the, the dream warriors, the characters, facing Freddy, and they were kind of standing on the blades, and they were facing Freddy, and the box was like, wow, this is cool, you know? I'd never watched a horror movie before, but I always saw these boxes where people were terrified, people were afraid, people were, were victims, and in, on this box, the people weren't necessarily victims. The people were facing Freddy. And I knew who Freddy was. Everybody knows who Freddy is. You know, it's, it's like they said in New, New Nightmare. Everybody knows who Freddy is. Even if you've never even seen the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie, you know who he is. And I knew who he was. But seeing these characters who were facing him, I was like, I gotta have this movie. And I was little. I was like 10, 11. <laughs> Back in those days, you get on your bike, ride to the, ride to, uh, you know, a drugstore, and the drugstore sold VHS tapes also, and that was what I did. I got on my bike, rode over to the to a drugstore that was about a half mile away from my house. It was a different time back then. At 10 years old, I was able to get on my bike and ride a half mile away. Nobody cared. I bought the movie with my own money that I saved up, came home, watched it, and ever since then, Freddy's just been important to me. Freddy's been important to me. So let's count down. There's been nine movies that Freddy Krueger has appeared in. Let's count these down from worst to best. These, these are my personal favorites. Your list is going to look different than mine, and that's okay. These are my personal favorites. So number nine, the worst one, is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. And this is, like, probably the only one that I genuinely hate. I don't like this movie at all. This is not a good movie. This movie made Freddy out to be a joke. And I remember being so excited when I saw the poster for this when I was a kid and, and I didn't go to the theaters to see Freddy's Dead I was I was still too little for my parents to take me out to the theaters to see Freddy's Dead but I remember seeing the poster and thinking I gotta see this movie and when I finally did watch it on video I was just disappointed in every way a person could be disappointed they turned Freddy into a joke they turned him into a punchline he was just a gag um, the characters were dumb the dream sequences were dumb this was not a good movie in any way whatsoever. The best kill, the one where the deaf kid's head explodes, it was still a joke. The whole thing was a joke. Did not like Freddy's Dead at all. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I don't care if I ever see it again. It was a bad movie. So number nine is Freddy's Dead. Number eight also wasn't a good movie, but I don't have the same kind of vile contempt for it that I do for Freddy's Dead. And that's probably because of the uh, the lead actress in it. So number eight is Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. So Lisa Wilcox returned as Alice in this one. And I love Alice. You know, she only appeared in two movies, The Dream uh, the Dream Master and The Dream Child. But she was so wonderful in The Dream Master that you still loved having her around in The Dream Child. Even though The Dream Child was a watered-down Freddy movie, there's only like three kills in the whole movie. He was played for comedy in this movie. Not as bad as Freddy's Dead, but he was still played for comedy. Um, so The Dream Child, while it's a bad movie, it still had Alice. It had one really good kill. The motorcycle speed demon kill um, was, a, was a really great kill with a lot of really great practical special effects. Um, but overall, the movie just was just bad and boring. It was just boring. 
And a Freddy movie should never be boring. And this movie definitely was. It dived into the lore of Freddy Krueger a little bit with Amanda Krueger and Freddy being the son of a hundred maniacs or a thousand maniacs or whatever. It dived into that lore a little bit, her being locked in the asylum over, over the holiday. But none of it felt like it really added much to the character. It, if anything, it kind of watered Freddy down a little bit. So Nightmare on Elm Street 5 is definitely guilty of of not giving it, us enough Freddy, but when they did give us Freddy, just watered him down and made him made him a joke, made him a punchline, or made him less scary. So the dream child is number eight. Number seven is Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Don't know who he's getting his revenge on because nobody from the first movie is in this one. It's just the same house. Um, this had some great sequences in it, especially the beginning with the bus, that scene, I actually did catch that scene when I was a kid, and that scene terrified me. I don't know why, but that scene terrified me when I was a kid. But this scene does have have this movie does have some interesting concepts in it. Um, you know, Freddy at the party, Freddy emerging from from the from the boy's body, um, Freddy inhabiting Jesse. You know, Freddy becoming a possessing Jesse. All very interesting stuff, but it doesn't really fit with the lore that we establish later on. I kind of look at this one as being outside of continuity. I don't know if that's the way the filmmakers look at it, but I definitely look at this one being outside of continuity. Now, there's the famous idea that this is a um, this is the homosexual Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of that. It, if it's a if it's a, a homosexual. Um, it, if there's some homosexual undertones, I don't care. I, I I didn't ca I didn't pick up on them when I first watched it. Maybe a little bit now that I've seen it, I can pick up on it. But who cares anyways? Who cares? Every time I talk about Nightmare on Elm Street two with somebody, they want to talk about that aspect of the movie, and I don't care. I'm looking for story, and I'm looking for Freddy kills. And this one had a story that I didn't care about that much. Some of the Freddy kills were pretty good, though. It, this did have the iconic line, you are all my children now. So there's a lot of good to be had in Nightmare on Elm Street 2. But not enough to put it above any of the other movies. So Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is at number 7. Number 6 is the Nightmare on Elm Street remake that came out in 2010. I know a lot of people love to hate on this, but you gotta admit, Jackie Earl Haley knocked it out of the park. It, it, for, Freddy was always one of those roles where you're like, nobody else can ever play him. Nobody else can ever play Freddy Krueger except for Robert England. Well, Jackie Earl Haley proved that wrong. He did a fantastic job as Freddy. He was scary. He had a great presence. The problem was he was in a story that just wasn't very good. I find the story better than the story from 2, 5, and Freddy's Dead. But the story just wasn't very good. Um, um, the girl who played Nancy, the girl from uh, Dragon Tattoo, I just didn't like the Nancy character. And Nancy is a character you have to like. She's wholesome. She's a character. She is the character that has the ability to take on Freddy because of her wholesomeness and her um, ingenuity. But this character had none of that. So I didn't care for Nancy at all. And that's a big part of why this movie's lower on the list. But Jackie O'Haley knocked it out of the park as Freddy. So the remake is sitting at number six. Number five, it's funny. Number five is is kind of the halfway point on the list, but this one probably gets the most play out of all of them. I probably watch this one more than any of the others just because it's just a delight for the eyes. It's fun to watch. It's just silly. It's a silly movie that's fun to watch, but it's it's not better than any of the, any of the other ones in front of it, so I, I, I definitely have it at number five, but that's Freddy versus Jason. Man, this was just a fun movie to watch. This movie's just bursting with energy. There's not a whole lot of meat there as far as plot's concerned. It's And it's funny. It's more of a Freddy movie than a Jason movie. But Freddy only gets one kill in the whole movie. Jason... Whoa. Sorry about that, guys. Jason gets a whole bunch of kills. Freddy gets one. So while the plot is more of a Nightmare on Elm Street-driven plot... Jason gets all the kills, and part of that was a needed thing for the story, but I felt like as we got deeper into the story, Freddy could have gotten more kills, and he didn't, so, so, yeah, if, it's kind of a mishmash as far as who the lead is, and I feel like Freddy's probably the lead over Jason, 
but Jason just gets more of the shining horror icon moments. That's not to say that Freddy didn't have a lot to do. His battle against Jason was brilliant. The dream battle was great, and then the final battle was also great. Um, seeing these two creatures go at each other with no no limits, no no holds barred. You know, they they went full gore on this, and it was it was just it was eye candy. It was so much fun to watch, and uh, I'm so glad that they brought it to, to to fruition. This is one of those movies when I was a kid, I wanted it to happen. I wanted it to happen ever since Jason goes to hell and Freddy's mask comes up and pulls Jason or Freddy's hand comes up and pulls Jason's mask down. I wanted to see this movie, and it just never happened. It never happened. It never happened. When it finally did. I was on board, and, and I had so much fun with it, and it's still a movie I have a lot of fun with. So number five, Freddy vs. Jason. Number four is Wes Craven's New Nightmare. This was the first movie that, the first Freddy movie that I saw in the theaters, and I still love it to this day. This movie was ahead of its time. This movie was self-referential. It, um, it, it knew what it was, and, and kind of... It kind of took horror to a different place where you were bringing the actors, the writers, the directors, you were bringing all them and making them characters in the movie. Nobody had ever done that before. And the audience wasn't really ready for it because what we got in the movie was we got, we didn't get Freddy. Freddy Krueger is not in this movie. It's a demon that takes on the personification of Freddy. And that was a really interesting idea. And to see Nan, uh, um, um, Heather, um, what's her name? Heather Langenkamp come back and play Nancy. Again, that last time. It was phenomenal. And so, this movie was ahead of its time. If this movie would have come out during the Scream era, just a few years later, during the Scream era, this movie would have done a lot better. Unfortunately, Wes Craven, being the innovator that he was, did something that was a little ahead of its time. But today, New Nightmare has gained an appreciation among Freddy fans, and it's one of the top. On any list, you're going to see New Nightmare near the top, and for me, it's number four. Number three is Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. This was a direct continuation of part three to the point where they had the same actors playing the same characters with the exception of, um, of uh, Kristen. They didn't get the same actor back to uh, Patricia Arquette. Apparently it had gotten too big to play Kirsten again. But everybody else was the same. And um, this was a really fun fun Freddy movie. Freddy was still scary in this movie, but this is also the movie where they really started to, to tur turn a little bit and make him a bit of a joke. Like you had the scene on the beach where he puts his sunglasses on. That was silly. That was stupid. But there was still a lot of really good Freddy moments in this movie. A lot of really good Freddy kills. And it, I was bummed when they did, when they killed off the cast from part three. I was really bummed about that. That turned me off immediately. But Alice became such a good character and such a strong character that by the end of it, I didn't mind. She was great. She was phenomenal. And how she takes on the powers, the dream powers of the people who die, the Elm Street children who die, who die. That was a really fun take on a character that came to be known as the Dream Master. So I love Alice. She's actually my favorite character in the Nightmare on Elm Street lore, even more so than Nancy. I love Alice. Um, wish we had gotten more of her, but Nightmare on Elm Street 4, great movie, fun movie, and I, I believe it's the highest grossing movie in the, in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. If you take, maybe Freddy vs. Jason made a little bit more, but as far as the direct franchise, I believe it was the highest grossing, and there's a reason. I believe it's the most fun out of all of them. That doesn't mean it's the best, but Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master, is the most fun. So it's number three. Number two is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. This movie was scary. It was um, atmospheric. It was gritty. Freddy was not a punchline at all in this movie. He was straight monster. And I really appreciate that about this movie. Nancy was great. John Saxon was great in this. And this movie was just firing in all cylinders until the end. The end was stupid. Um heard beating Freddy by stop by no longer believing in him that was dumb and then the whole scene at the end where he pulls uh, Nancy's mom through the window that was all dumb that was all studio studio meddling to set up a sequel but from point A to to the very end the movie was wonderful just wonderful it's a little slow compared to some of the other ones but I still think that it's the second best of the Elm Street movies. So it's number two. Number one, Process of Elimination. 
you've already figured it out. Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, is by far the best Nightmare movie. Wes Craven came back to direct, and Nightmare on Elm Street 3 is to Nightmare 1 what Aliens is to Alien. It took the mythology and expanded upon it. It took the characters and, and made them no longer victims, but made them people who were ready to fight back. Nightmare on M Street 3 is the best nightmare movie by far. It's one of the best horror movies ever made. Maybe that's a little bit of nostalgia speaking, but the characters were great. Every one of the characters were fleshed out, and you felt for them. And like I said, it just expanded on that mythology. Having uh, Kirsten there as the main character was fantastic, but also having Nancy come back and kind of be Kirsten's mentor was great. John Saxon coming back and having that final battle with Freddy, um, Skeleton Freddy in the junkyard was just it was all great. It was all great. I'm telling you guys, Nightmare on Elm Street 3, if you haven't seen it, watch it because this is a great horror movie. The performances are great. The action is great. The special effects were great for their time. You know, the kills, the kills were, were some of the best. You get the marionette kill, um, the, 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 uh, syringes, the syringes on the fingers kill. Um, there were so many great kills in this movie. Uh, the wheelchair kill, you know, I am the wizard master. This movie is filled with iconic Freddy moments. Welcome to prime time. This is iconic Freddy. This is Freddy when he's at his best. This is Freddy when he's firing at all cylinders. This is Freddy. This is the Freddy. Th this is the movie where we fell in love with Freddy, where audiences fell in love with Freddy was this movie. Here he's witty. He's making jokes, but he's not a punchline. He's not funny. I love this movie. I love this movie. So let's recap. Number nine, Freddy's Dead. Number eight, part five, The Dream Child. Number seven, part two, Freddy's Revenge. Number six, the remake. Number number five, Freddy's Dead, or Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy's Dead is a number five. Number five is Freddy vs. Jason. Number four is New Nightmare. Number three is The Dream Master. Number two is Nightmare on Elm Street. And number one is part three, The Dream Warriors. What's your ranking of these movies? Let me know in the comments down below. What's your favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie? Maybe you don't want to rank them, but you do have a favorite. Let me know that in the comments down below. Hey, guys, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get that 100 subscribers. I know it's small potatoes and it means nothing, but for me, that would feel like an accomplishment. So please subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you for being here at the OQ Review, where we talk about all the geeky, nerdy stuff that we love to talk about. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.